Hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Whole Home Show. I'm Tony Joe, your host here every week, bringing you tips, education, and updates on home-related matters. Whether you're in the real estate market or if you're looking for decorating or improvement ideas for your home, this is the place to be. Our show comes to you with the support of our show partners, Denise Webster, mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Center's Modern Mortgage Group, J.P. Sellers, insurance advisor with Westland Insurance, operating as Island Savings Insurance, the Sitka Law Group for your real estate, wills and estates, corporate and personal injury needs, and Shoreline Inspections with Reese Jacob and Monica Gass. If you need some help or direction in your real estate transaction, give any of the whole Home Show team members a call. They would love to hear from you. You could always get in touch with me as well, too. I'd be happy to chat with you. I am a born and raised Victorian. I've been selling real estate here since 1991. I've seen hundreds of transactions and people uh, going through their real estate purchasing and selling needs. Uh, I would be happy to help you out as well, too. We're in a very interesting time right now. Uh, the entire, not just Victoria, not just the province or the country for that matter, or the, wor the world is gripped right now with coronavirus and COVID-19. This is the biggest question that is coming up on everyone's feeds right now. Uh, and it is something that is affecting real estate. Now, today I am recording this episode for you. I'm actually not even in the studio where I normally am. I'm at home right now and our producer Corey uh, is remote as well too. This is the things that we, these are the things we have to do nowadays. We are self isolating, making sure that we are not in front of uh, people if we don't need to be. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to all of the frontline workers and care workers out there who are working really hard. I have friends and family members who are, uh, who are among them uh, and they really are our first line of defense. Um, but, you know, today we're talking about what is, what is going to happen with real estate and how this is all affecting real estate. Uh, our guest today will be two of our show partners. Uh, first is Denise Webster from uh, Dominion Lending Center's Modern Mortgage Group. Uh, and secondly, we have Gurpreet Randawa from the Sitka Law Group. Because there's been a lot of changes in all things, not just real estate, uh, but also uh, in the world of mortgages and also in uh, the world of uh, law. Now, the other thing today, by the way, because we're doing things a little bit differently right now, uh, we're also video recording today's episode. So not only will we be posting it on the CFAX 1070 website uh, and also putting it on our podcast, just as a reminder, we're on iTunes and Google Play at any time. Uh, we're also going to be posting this online. So our Facebook groups and other social media areas. Uh, so you can watch us in video for once. Um, uh, Denise uh, is looking very pretty today. You made yourself up. <laughs> uh, me too. I might not be wearing pants today. Who knows? Uh, that's the neat thing about <laughs> about working out of uh, out of home right now but it's a reminder i never really bring this up to the rest of our listeners uh please uh visit and like our facebook page it's the prime team victoria prime team vic on facebook we always post lots of great information uh right now we're trying not to overwhelm with the covid stuff because you know we're seeing that all over the place but there's a lot of discussion out there um all over the place now we always start with our weekly listener question. And if you've got one, give us a call. It's 250-414-6540. That's 250-414-6540. Or find us online, cfax1070.com. Look under shows. There you'll find us, the whole home show with me, Tony Joe, and the rest of our sponsors. And you can always just send a message and we'll answer it on the air. Uh, we did get a voice message uh, last Saturday. Uh, didn't leave a name. A fella left a, um, a message. Uh, and your question was, what's happening in the condo market right now? Uh, also, how is um, COVID affecting the condo market? Great question. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about this more today. The strange thing right now is real estate has not shut down. Now, it's quiet. There's no question. There isn't the activity that we had before. But people are still buying and selling real estate. It's the strangest thing. Now, the story is true uh, regardless of what we're going through right now as far as the condo market is concerned. It depends where you are, depends on location, and it also depends on the price point as well too. Uh, one of the things that Denise will be talking about a little bit later is the fact that interest rates right now are really, really low. And it seems to be driving people towards wanting to purchase real estate, which is the reason why we're still seeing sales right now, despite the fact that people are supposed to be staying in their uh, homes and self-isolating. 
there's a real drive and um, uh, motivation for people to be out there right now. So again, really depends on the type of condo that you have and the location you're at. Um, again, we'll ask, in fact, we'll ask Denise right now. Uh, Denise, you're Hello. there, right? Okay. I'm here. All right. Because rates are low right now, um, are you seeing a lot of first timers trying to enter the market right now, even with all the stuff going on? Well, Tony, I'm still doing some pre-approval applications of people that are interested and want to look at the market. Um, but I'm going to correct you a little bit there because um, things have changed drastically in the last week to two. Oh, it's weeks. like changing by the day or by yeah. the hour, right? Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in fact, in fact, I should mention that to our listeners right now because we are pre-recording this one here. So, you know, anything that we're talking about right now can change by the time we air on Saturday. It's right? different tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Um, so one of the biggest things, I mean, everything that you were hearing in the news was the rates were dropping and that was really the big, the big stuff was the variable rate, our floating mortgage rates. So that was following the Bank of Canada's overnight lending rate dropping by by half a percent on March 4th and then another half a percent and our banks and mortgage lenders followed that and they dropped that prime lending rate from 3.95 down to 2.95 mm -hmm. so that's the big thing you everybody was hearing in the news about rates are dropping rates are dropping that was our floating rates but on the other side of it fixed rates have been going up 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 oh. and very quickly okay um, so just uh, I would say just a week ago you know our five-year fixed rate for um, let's just say that insured mortgage, less than 20% down, we were down to 2.339. Okay. And those are jumping, that's like looking at in the two seven fours now. Wow. Um, now the best explanation I can give on that is um, not necessarily following the Canadian bond rate because that's where our fixed rates usually um, fluctuate is with that bond rate. Mm -hmm. But more so, I really do believe that our lenders have raised rates and quickly, they are trying to slow down business. They have been inundated. Yeah. So there was a surge of really quick applications for refinances and anybody that was in there trying to get those purchases in. So uh, they raise rates to really slow business. They also raise rates because of liquidity. There's only so much money to lend. So when you get an increase of 300% in a day of applications coming in, yeah. they're really trying to a slow down the business and also protect their liquidity of how much they are going to lend. So was it was that is that a fact? There was 300% 300% uh... increase in refinances in a in a day. Well, of course, because people are concerned about their future and they're trying to use the equity in their their properties, yeah. right? So just yeah. like you, I'm really seeing the purchase side of things slow down, mm -hmm. whereas refinancing is front of mind right now for some people. Um, also renewing, they, they wanted to make sure should they renew now or in a year, what's going to look like in a year. So a lot of inquiries about refinancing, renewals, um, and then I'm going to get to those deferred mortgage payment questions as well. Yeah. But right, yeah, they're all over the map right now, and uh, I'd 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 absolutely don't even want to quote rates right now because they are changing <laughs> daily. <laughs> changing by the minute, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. sorry, one other thing. So on those variable rates, obviously a variable rate is looking really attractive now when prime rate drops by one percent. But within two days of that announcement, that second half of percent drop, within two days, every lender had removed their discount off of their variable rate. So where you used to have a floating rate of, let's say, prime minus 1%, which would now be 1.95 if wow. you were in that rate, yeah. um, we're now seeing prime plus 0.1 or prime plus 0.25. They've increased their discount. They've taken away their discount and actually increased it. So variable rates are not nearly as attractive as they sound. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, we're still going to talk a lot more because we, we, we've got you here today. Uh, but going back to the question uh, that was asked about the, uh, about the condo market, I, I guess what I'm getting to here is it's not completely dead. It's not like the real estate market has shut down. We're going to talk more about this throughout this episode, by the way, because there's a lot of stuff we need to talk about, about safety and protocols and uh, health uh, issues and all that kind of stuff. My thoughts too, I will share with the listeners today, my thoughts about, you know, what organized real estate should be doing right now. Um, there's just so much to talk about, but, but again, thank you very much for your call in. And again, uh, apologies. I did not get your name. And it's a reminder to anyone else who calls in, please give us your name. We would love, uh, uh to, uh, uh, to be able to identify you. Uh, and if you have anything that you want to share with us or have a question, the number is 250-414-6540. 
That's 250-414-6540. We need to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll be talking with lawyer Gurpreet Randawa from the Sitka Law Group, telling us about changes in the law profession surrounding coronavirus. Back in just a moment. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. We're talking today about real estate in the time of coronavirus, things that are going on right now. We had a conversation with Denise Webster, our show partner, talking about mortgage rates just before the break. We're going to have Denise back uh, as well uh, after the next break. Right now, we have with us Gurpreet Randawa, also another show partner here at The Whole Home Show. She is a principal with the Sitka Law Group. Uh, Gurpreet, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, and again, to all of our listeners, not only uh, are we on air right now uh, on CFAX, we will have this on our usual podcast source, and we're going to be posting this video. So you'll see the three of us uh, conversing uh, on the Prime Team Facebook page, Fr Prime Team Vic. So make sure you look us up. Uh, Gurpreet, how are things in the law world right now? Different. <laughs> okay. Um, we're finally being forced to make better use of technology, which I think is a good thing un under unfortunate circumstances. But um, at our office, we have most of our staff set up remotely. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to keep people at the office to a minimum to encourage and promote social distancing. Um, well, we notice, we notice that you're in your office right now. So I guess that's, yeah. it's hard to avoid, right? Yeah, unfortunately, I do still have to be here because um, with real estate, we unfortunately do still need to be present in front of our clients to, to sign documents. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still doing that. Um, we, are, we have taken measures at our office to, um, to ensure that, that we are maintaining a good distance. We're screening clients before they come into the office. Um, we're meeting in a boardroom where there's lots of space. And then we're sanitizing before and after meetings. So definitely taking some measures. Mm -hmm. um, but some of our solicitors are still at the office, yes. So there was some conversation about technology stepping in and maybe, uh, because one of the things that has always been talked about is electronic signatures, which we do a lot of when we're doing a real estate transaction. So when mm -hmm. people are making offers back and forth, this has always been a, um, a topic of discussion with you guys because of course, uh, there's always that question about the enforceability of a electronic signature as opposed to face-to-face. -to -face. You guys are notaries. I mean, that's the whole idea is you notarize when people are actually signing documents, right? So what's yeah. happening in that, in that respect? Uh, in that respect, I've, I've always thought it was interesting that you can enter into a contract of purchase and sale that binds you by signing electronically without witnesses. However, you do need to be present in front of your lawyer or notary. Um, to sign all the real estate documents. So land title transfer documents, mortgage documents, and that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. The Law Society has sent out notices to all lawyers to remind them that video conferencing is not permitted for witnessing purposes of land title documents. Okay. Um, so we are not able to unfortunately witness documents by Zoom or Skype or other video conferencing methods. Mm -hmm. um, there are, um, Land Titles is accepting um, or allowing lawyers to sign uh, different pages of documents contemporaneously with clients. So for example, we don't have to touch the same document that a client signed. We can, we can sign a, a different page. Yeah, well, because th this is the case. When people come in and sign, you're, you're moving around a piece of paper, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. So we yeah. can, we don't have to sign the same page so we can maintain a safe distance. Mm -hmm. And in instances where a client is uh, not able to be present in front of a lawyer or notary to sign a document, um, Land Titles is accepting what's called an affidavit of execution. So somebody still has to be present in front of the transfer or the person mm -hmm. selling the property. Um, they then need to go see a lawyer, notary, or commissioner of oaths to swear an affidavit, confirming that they know the person and that they know the signature mm -hmm. and the signature on that document represents the transfer or. Oh, so sorry. This is, is this a new function or is this something that's always been, uh, available? this is always, I shouldn't say always, this has been around for a while. However, it's most commonly used when clients are signing outside of BC. Mm -hmm. That's typically where you see this affidavit of execution used. Um, but now, um, their land titles, registrar of land titles is saying, you know, um, we, we are still accepting this. Um, so if somebody's not able to be present in front of a, a, um, 
an officer, mm -hmm. um, then uh, we can accept an affidavit of execution. Got it. Discretion does lie with the registrar uh -huh. as to whether or not they're going to accept that. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Well, because this is another one of the big questions that's come up is with real estate. And of course, one of the questions is, is it an essential service, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, but it's amazing that people are uh, transacting in real estate right now. One of the biggest concerns is if you have a deal pending or a sale that you made well before all of this coronavirus stuff, the biggest mm -hmm. concern is, can it close? Can mm -hmm. the lawyers actually uh, do the uh, title transfer? Is the land title office operating? Mm -hmm. um, and as of right now, obviously it is. It is, exactly. We, we have not um, heard that it, it is going to close down or we haven't received any guidelines as to whether or not we would be considered an essential service. I know in Ontario, um, the law profession is considered an essential service. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I don't know if that's going to be the case here. Uh, so we, we don't quite know what's going to happen if we're going to be required to lock down. Obviously, real estate uh, transactions can't be registered if land titles is down. Yeah. Well, and, and let's talk about that because land titles, I mean, it used to be where you'd run down to the land title office, which used to be in the courthouse. Uh, and then you, you, the lawyer, would send down a, an agent or whatever you call them. And they open up their briefcase and they got all the files and then, you know, all the stamping happens, and all that stuff. That's long gone now, right? Because you guys pretty well execute everything online anyways, right? Yeah, I'm nodding as though I went through that, but that's never been the case <laughs> okay. since right. I've been a lawyer. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I remember those days. I remember those days. <laughs> Everything is done electronically. Yeah. Um, so we submit all documents uh, through a, a portal system. Um, everything's registered electronically on the day of closing. Uh, we don't actually send original documents to land titles. Mm -hmm. The lawyer does have an obligation to confirm that the, the, the electronic document being submitted uh, is an accurate representative representation of the original that we have in our possession. Yeah. Um, but no, everything happens electronically with land okay. titles. Yeah. So, so now are you seeing any uh, troublesome transactions right now or issues that are related to uh, COVID? I have not yet. I'm finding actually that most clients want to, come sign as soon as possible before everything shuts down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm finding. But even if clients do sign and there's a lockdown, we can't really do anything yeah. with those signed copies. I am seeing a lot of real estate brokerages include wording in contracts now Yes. Um, to contemplate potential delays due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, then we, we, sh we should explain that to our listeners right now. So yeah. Um, first of all, this, these clauses have not been approved by our governing body, by the British Columbia, um, sorry, the Real Estate Council of British Columbia yet, mm -hmm. uh, but realtors are implementing them. And basically it's a clause that says that if delays occur as a result of the coronavirus, that both parties, uh, have agreements that, you know, it will still continue on up to a certain time or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in though, and where you do have that wording, um, the result and intentions are very clear mm -hmm. um, that either the deal is going to be extended for a period of time or it's going to terminate. Yeah. Um, so uh, with those situations, it'll be clear. Uh, we still don't know what, what will happen with current pending deals that don't have that wording. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, the Interpretation Act does provide that if a business is closed, for example, a law firm is closed, the deal will close the next business day. Yeah. Oh that. yeah. So that could, if what happens if that's not just Monday, but it's like yeah. a month from now, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, aside from real estate, I mean, are you, are you guys, you guys are obviously handling other things, right? Yep. So um, we, we don't actually um, practice employment law, but getting a lot of inquiries from businesses on, on laying off uh, and terminating employees and, I always recommend to them that they get employment advice before taking steps because in certain situations, uh, a layoff can be considered termination of employment, yeah. which can give rise to severance obligations. Yeah. So there's mitigation methods that can be used to mitigate against those risks, but any businesses that are in that position should seek appropriate advice. Mm -hmm. um, before terminating or, or laying off. Employees. Yeah, you know, it's a phrase that I, I never thought that I would have to bump into, but I hear the words force majeure a lot nowadays. 
Yeah, we're wow. seeing a lot of, uh, uh, we're seeing that term being thrown around a lot and that essentially uh, provides that the parties are unable to fulfill the terms of a contract due to reasons beyond their control. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is generally a contractual term and you don't often see it in employment contracts. You don't see it in a, in a contract of purchase and sale for real estate. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> there's things that we need to deal with right now. It's an interesting time. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, uh, as always, uh, Gurpreet, if people need to reach the Sickle Law Group, what's the best way to do that? Uh, they can reach us by phone, uh, 778-265-2677 or email, um, uh, Sitkala is our dot .ca is our website. Um, yeah. Our emails are all located on the website. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining us. I know you're busy and I know it's lunchtime right now. Uh, so uh, we'll sign off with you. We're going to come back after this break and continue our conversation with Denise Webster about what's going on out there in real estate in today's world. Back in just a moment. Thanks for coming back. You are listening to The Whole Home Show, and I'm Tony Joe. Our show comes to you every week with the support of our show partners, Denise Webster, mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Center's Modern Mortgage Group, J.P. Sellers from, the, from Westland Insurance operating as Island Savings Insurance. He is an insurance advisor. The Sitka Law Group for your real estate, wills and estates, corporate and personal injury needs and Shoreline Inspections with Reese Jacob and Monica Gass. If you need any help with your real estate transaction, whether it's now in this crazy time or any time out there, please give the show supporters of the whole home show here a call anytime. They would love to hear from you. We are recording today from my home office uh, and also, so rather strangely, not at CFAX. I'm missing it. I like coming into the studio every week. But of course, we have things to talk about today. Uh, and we are self-isolating as well. We, uh, just before the break, we're chatting with Gurpreet Randawa from the Sitka Law Group about the changes and what lawyers are having to deal with right now with real estate transacting during this time. Uh, we also have with us Denise Webster, our intrepid mortgage broker uh, and also a show supporter here. We talked a little bit earlier about interest rates, uh, but Denise, again, thanks for joining us. What a it's time, good. eh? It's good to see your face too. <laughs> Great. Well, and thanks for the reminder. So for our listeners here, not only are we um, on the air right now, we're also going to be on the CFAX 1070 website streaming. We also are podcasting as we always do on iTunes or Google Play. Uh, and this time now, because we are doing a video screen capture, you're going to be able to find this recording on the Prime Team, Prime Real Estate Team Victoria Facebook page. That's the Prime Real Estate Team, which is me, of course. Just look up Prime Team Vic like us, join us. There's lots of great information there. And we're trying not to be too COVID-19 centered because there's still lots of great stuff to talk about out there. Uh, Denise, crazy time, huh? Uh, first of all, I know you're busy. Like you, your phone is probably ringing off the hook. Your uh, email uh, auto response a little while ago had the phone numbers of all of the banks <laughs> recommending where people can call if they have questions. I remember that, right? Yeah, I thought I better at least get that on because my response time has been a little bit slow. I am trying to keep up my best with my phone calls on my emails and my existing files that, that you know, have to take some priority as well. Yeah. Okay. So we talked earlier because we had that question from our listener about what's going on in the market. And you were talking about how uh, the fixed rates are actually going up and interest rates are changing by the day because we're recording here, you know, what the listeners are listening to right now can change between now and Saturday. Absolutely. So, yeah. so things can change. Um, what are you seeing out there? What's, what's the biggest, cause we talked about uh, refinancing. Obviously that's a big one right now. Um, let's just talk about real estate as far as people buying and selling. What's the mindset that you're encountering right now? Um, well, I think lenders are really just kind of on a case by case basis on their existing files right now of, um, you know, they've signed off on maybe a purchase contract that's uh, removed conditions, deposits have been paid, and the completion date is months down the road. Um, and so they are probably revisiting a lot of their files and kind of wondering, you know, are, are these um, borrowers, are they still employed? So, um, I mean, it's, 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 like I said, a case by case basis, I think that some lenders may recall the employment letter and see if the client is still receiving income, uh, or they may request a current pay stub. And some people may not okay. be able to So that. let's talk this one through. So, so uh, somebody makes a sale, their sale is confirmed, uh, say today, in a normal time, today, yep. right? And they're not moving in for three months. 
So when they get their approval, usually that's done. The bank doesn't ask for any proof of employment between now and three months down. I know they do sometimes. Sometimes not- they can surprise us. Yeah. I mean, I, it's always the advice to my client. Don't go and quit your job yeah. <laughs> until you've moved into your house. If you've got a, an, you know, another job opportunity or something. Got but it. Yeah. It's very rare. Once we uh, remove conditions, we have satisfied those um, in the eyes lender. So we've satisfied their income. We've satisfied their down payment. We've proven and provided all these documents that were necessary for their mortgage approval. And it becomes what's called broker complete. It gets instructed to the lawyer and there it waits for the completion date to have money change hands and possession date. Okay. So of those that are sitting in the queue right now, the concern is our lender's going to recall on those uh, income documents. Well, because the bank's got to worry about their own liability, right? They, you Absolutely. know, what, what happens if, like if. They're if, very, very worried right now. They're yeah. very protective of their, um, their liquidity. I mentioned that a little bit earlier, like how much money are they um, going to be lending out? And, you know, where is the strength in their files? Do, are they going to be a little more picky about what they're approving? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, what was the stat I heard this morning? Um, so, well, we are seeing uh, lenders dropping off of the broker channel, just saying no more applications. So our credit unions, uh, I mean, I shouldn't throw names up. Coast Capital, for one of them, they just said no more applications from brokers. They're just dealing with their in-house stuff right now. Mm-hmm. So we could see but, that. But, that, but that, probably ha- that probably has to do more with capacity, right? Capacity, volume. Okay. But again, a credit union only has so much money as their deposits. Yes. Right. But then what was the, what did I, sorry, my notes here. Um, 18 billion was from the federal government was pushed into credit unions today. Okay. (laughs) So there's just constant moving targets right now. And um, is it going to be based on um, the capacity of our lenders being able to take on the increased volume of those refinances I talked about the capacity of their liquidity? Um, and then what they do have, are they, are they going to re-approve, if, yeah. if that makes sense? Yeah. It, it, yeah. You go through the process again, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is obviously a legitimate area of concern for anyone who is in the throes right now of a real estate transaction. Yes. And this translates also to the sellers because a seller has got to have some nervousness as well, too, about whether or not the buyer is going to be able to complete, right? Of course. Yeah. There's been a lot of layoffs. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, I mean, some may say that this is early days still too, right? So who yes. knows what's going to happen. And yeah. will lenders have some forgiveness in this knowing that, you know, these were solid employment jobs. Yes. They they've been with that company for many, many years. Yes. They will go back to work and obviously they just can't produce a pay stub right now. Got it. Okay. Uh, a big question that people have though is uh, what is, is there official word about banks allowing skip payments, missing payments, all that kind of stuff? Again, people best, are afraid, right? Yes. And gosh, I wish they would rename it because I don't like the idea of somebody thinking it's a skipped payment. They don't have to pay it. Even people don't really understand the word deferred. Um, I like to say it's delaying your payments. They don't go away. They are being yeah. delayed. It's not a freebie. It is not a freebie and it's a big decision. Um, yeah. You know, and you also have to be very mindful about the urgency of you deciding to defer your payments because please take into consideration if you're doing okay and you still have your jobs and you think you can make your mortgage payments, if you get in that phone queue of, you know, anywhere from two to four hour wait lines right now, um, are you stopping somebody from urgently to defer their mortgage payments? So be very mindful of that as well. Really take into consideration, do you have other means of help right now before you defer your payments? Um, I'm going to try to make it as easy to understand and use the example of maybe um, an average Canadian mortgage of 400,000. Um, we are in a great time of really low interest rates. So let's just say it's roughly around a 3% interest rate. And let's say, um, let's say your mortgage payment of principal and interest is 50, 50. So for every payment, and I, the math is all wrong here, but I really think it should make sense to off the top of your head. Yeah. So your mortgage payment is $2,000 a month. 1000 of that goes to interest, 1000 goes to principal, and that's how it's applied. So your principal payment comes down by 1000 after every payment and you pay the interest portion. Yeah. If you delay, defer your payments, you are just delaying and stopping the payment of interest and you're no longer making a principal payment. 
So now that $2,000 payment is on hold. The interest still adds up. It's yeah. still going to be tacked on. So if your mortgage balance was four hundred thousand and you don't make a payment of principal, your mortgage payment owing now principal is four hundred and one thousand dollars. That interest got added on. Yeah, yeah. You do that for six months, and yeah. now your principal balance is four hundred and six thousand dollars plus interest on that interest. Yeah. Okay. Interest on the interest. Yeah. Interest on okay. the interest. Interest is still accruing. You must understand that you've just stopped your principal payment a portion as well, but the interest payment is being added on to that. The interest payment is being added on to the principal balance. Yeah. Now you're going to have to pay that back. It doesn't go away. So the key to really understanding this is how much time do you have left in the term of your mortgage? Because that now can be spread out on the remaining term of your mortgage. So if you've got four years left of your five-year term, that $6,000 spread out over the next four years is really not going to change your mortgage payment too much, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Because not just the four years remaining, they'll look at the remaining amortization as well. So yeah. typically you have either a 30-year original amortization or a 25-year amortization. If you're four years in, you've got 24 years or 29 years left, they will spread out that interest that has added up over the six months over the remaining amortization, readjust your payment, okay? Yeah. So then when you decide to start paying your mortgage again, which we think right now, right, is they're really only talking about a maximum of six months. Some lenders are gonna be month to month, and I must stress every lender is different and it yeah. is changing every day. You, have you gotta to check with the lender. lender. Yeah. yeah, so when it goes back into repayment mode, that interest has now been added to the principal balance. They re-amortize to figure out what your new payment is. Your payment will go up. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, uh, so we, got, we got to continue this conversation. It's break time right now. Holy cow. Um, listeners, stay with us. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Thanks for coming back. You're listening to The Whole Home Show, and I am Tony Joe. We are recording today from my home office because I am in self-isolation spending time with my family. Uh, everyone else should be as well too. We're gonna to be talking about isolation and uh, health and safety with real estate in a little bit. But we have with us um, on our Zoom meeting right now. So I can see Denise Webster, our show partner. She is our mortgage broker with Dominion Lending Center's uh, Modern Mortgage Group. Uh, we've been telling everyone, uh, as usual, our episode here is not only playing right now on CFAX 1070, we're also going to be streaming on the CFAX1070.com website and the usual podcast locations of uh, iTunes and Google Play. Plus, now we are posting this entire video on the Prime Real Estate Team's Facebook page, Fr Prime Team Vic. Please look us up, like us, tons of information there. Great stuff, including uh, videos. You can actually see your guests for once. Uh, we're having lots of fun here. Uh, Denise, before the break, we were having the conversation about people uh, curious about being able to delay, defer, put off mortgage payments because obviously concerns about work and a whole bunch of other things. Yes, and I'm sorry, I, I try not to be um, sounding negative. I just feel it is a very urgent message to get across to people about really understanding what deferring your mortgage payment means. Yeah. Um, one piece of media uh, through my industry that I've heard, which was very upsetting and disturbing, I think, um, is some of the messaging that's being put out there. And there's been some mistakes on um, comparing business loans versus mortgages and deferring totally separate. You cannot a business loans over five years versus a amortization on a mortgage. Yeah. Uh, commercial loans are not being um, considered for deferment. So there's some false information out there as well. So we are talking about residential mortgages and rental property residential mortgages. So those are um, definitely open for the um, conversation with your lender. You have to speak to your lender directly and ask about deferring. They will be asking some questions as well. But the one thing that really was concerning for me was that some of the, the messaging is that the government has allowed us to defer mortgage payments. This is kind of, it's been mandated. That's what people have been hearing. Yes. 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 So people getting frustrated because um, it can be two to four hour wait on hold with your lender. So some people have been frustrated and they've made a critical error in actually contacting their personal bank and putting a stop payment on their mortgage. 
that is not a deferred payment. That is a default payment. If you stop your payment because you think you can, because it's allowed to defer, you are actually putting a missed payment through, which will greatly Into your credit. Oh my. So if you think you can just stop your mortgage payment because we're allowed to defer, it's very wrong. <laughs> Absolutely not. You have to have permission. You have to have this conversation with your bank. And in a perfect scenario, you guys, if you can get something in writing that your bank said you were able to defer, delay, put on hold your mortgage payments, it's great. Have that in writing if you can, because gosh forbid something goes wrong in the system between your mortgage lender and Equifax, and it does report as a missed payment, your yeah. credit score will be greatly hurt by a mortgage missed payment. A deferred payment approved by your lender will not affect your credit score. Okay. Wow. Stop your mortgage payments. Yeah. Do not stop your mortgage payment without approval or authorization from yes. your bank. Right? Yeah. It's an a, a approved deferral. Oh, thanks for that. That That's super duper important. Yes. Um, listen, you know what I want to talk about right now is uh, real estate in general right now. Um, so here's the thing. There's been a lot of conversation out there about, uh, we, I still get phone calls from sellers saying, I want to sell my house. I need to sell my house. Uh, we have resistance from tenants because of course, tenants are in their home. They're entitled to privacy and their, um, uh, you know, their, uh, their right. own, yeah, their own space. Um, of course, you know, tenants have rights. Landlords have rights too. Landlord wants to sell, you know, in a normal time, there are, you know, controls in place, right? Uh, and we have people that want to buy. See, right now, even with uh, the specter of coronavirus, there are showings that happen out there in the marketplace. They're not a lot. So showings are down. You know, I, I used the example of a property I listed in Rockland uh, the weekend before. Before this all happened, we would normally have, say, 15 showings on the first weekend. We had three. Uh, now, one of those parties is interested. So what's really happening is with all of this craziness uh, out there, no one should be heading out. Everyone should be staying home. The only people right now that are going out are people who are massively serious or motivated about buying or selling real estate. Uh, and as a result, instead of, say, 15 or 30 showings to a sale, we might get three or four showings to a sale. Now, we still need to do all of the necessary protocols. We have signage on the doors that ask people to uh, qualify themselves. Have they traveled in the last 14 days internationally or not? Do they have symptoms of uh, COVID-19? Have they been near people uh, COVID-19? Now, there is a fair amount of trust. So, you know, the consumer will answer the questions. The agent will answer the questions. Um, how do we confirm this? Well, you know what I've been telling people is, if an agent is working with a buyer, the agent knows the buyer well. The agent, ha you know, maybe Facebook friends, they know if they've been traveling, they know if they're talking about, you know, any symptoms or issues or, or whatever. Um, the bottom line is this, real estate is still going on. The uh, powers that be, the Real Estate Council of British Columbia has not shut down real estate activity. Uh, right or wrong, I'll be honest with you, uh, listeners, I was telling Denise and Gurpreet earlier, I would be just as happy to be at home self-isolating and spending time with kids. I'm getting a lot of phone calls from people who want to buy or sell. Now is not the time if you're just thinking, if you're a looky-loo, if you are just trying to get an idea of the marketplace, stay home, right? Now, if you must buy a house, there are opportunities out there of, for instance, vacant properties, right? Uh, a lot of us do virtual tours. So we have the technology now to do a 3D, three-dimensional virtual tour. Uh, I've actually been doing that for a good 10 years. So all of my properties have had virtual tours anyways. So we're getting people to actually go through them first and get a sense of what the property is like before making the appointment because then we've got to ask the questions, right? And then uh, buyers and their agents are also asking the occupants, asking the homeowners the same questions, whether they've traveled and, and whatnot. Uh, some other things, uh, just for our listeners, generally speaking, when a showing happens, the lights are left on, nobody's touching light switches. We are leaving disposable uh, gloves at the door along with a garbage can, and the uh, intent is that people should be wearing them when they're in the house. Uh, we have some dusk masks as well, too. Uh, granted, these are not medical masks. We make that very clear. 
uh, and uh, occupants are encouraged to disinfect that property after any showing. Doorknobs, handles, people are very, very concerned about that. When will this stop? Well, first of all, Friday was a big day because the Real Estate Council of British Columbia issued a, sorry, the British Columbia Real Estate Association, wrong uh, organization, issued a memo stating that open houses should not be conducted. That's, of course, when you get a lot of people in a, in a house at the same time. So no open houses. And secondly, they're suggesting against personal in-person showings of houses. Now, uh, listeners need to know the organized real estate, the real estate council and the real estate associations, they do not have the power to tell realtors not to do things because we are all independent contractors. However, they are giving best advice and um, uh, best practices uh, for realtors to, uh, to do. So we're not seeing open houses, nor should we. Uh, I think we all need to stay home as best we can and make sure that uh, this all ends pretty quickly. But uh, that being said, I want to tune Denise back in here as well, too, because a lot of this has to do with, uh, you know, the, the banking side of things, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, Denise, tell us about what you're feeling about out there with the people that you're working with who are buying. So, my existing buyers, um, for the most part, um, pretty solid. We're, uh, you know, just in my own book of business, uh, not too many concerns. A few where we feel like their income may be verified again by the lender because they're a long closing date, much further down the road. So, um, as I said earlier, it's going to be case by case, but absolutely there is some concern. Um, for somebody who is just uh, thinking about getting into the market, um, must be somebody who is very confident in their job position, their income, uh, no concerns of being laid off. You know, that's probably the biggest part that you need to get approved with your mortgage is your income uh, and your credit score. So, uh, goes back to don't mess up your credit score. Uh, yeah. That's a whole nother topic about people maybe tapping into their lines of credit and credit cards now too. Yeah. Oh, and a reminder, and this is the one that you bring up all the time, uh, make sure you keep those cell phone bills current. I mean, yes. if people are thinking about drop, you know, not paying those, that is also problematic from According a credit standpoint. Credit reports. Yeah. I mean, right now it's going to be very, very difficult and you may tap into your credit card more than you wish or your line of credit just absolutely make sure you're making those minimum payments on time we don't want to see this go for too long we have no idea yeah. but i do i'm worried about some credit scores further down the road right got it um, got it uh refinance is the same thing uh i understand why refinances have picked up and a lot of the time it is just to pull some of that available equity for uncertain times ahead um and right? that's the nice thing about having a property yeah because <laughs> yeah. you can do that yeah yeah um, gosh, there's something I really did want to talk about. Um, uh, oh, I'm going blank. It'll, it'll come to you. Well, listen, you know, there's, there's so many things to think about. The, the bottom line is this for our listeners. Um, believe it or not, in Ontario on Monday, uh, they listed real estate and real estate services as an essential service. Ah. So uh, is that coming to BC yet? I don't know. Maybe by the time we air this on Saturday, that will have happened. Um, so they feel that real estate is important. We are all just being very careful in how we conduct our real estate uh, practices right now, making sure that uh, safety and health uh, is, is paramount here. So, oh my goodness, so many things to know about. Our listeners, as a reminder, if you have questions or you want to chat, there's a couple of ways you're going to reach us. Number one, call 250-414-6540. 2504146540 find us on the cfax1070.com website go to my website the prime real estate team primeteam.ca uh, and denise's number you always give it yes call me directly 2508894743 uh shoot me an email as well i am getting back to my emails as fast as i can and that's denise at denisewebster.com uh, and listeners, uh, as always, if you would like to hear anything or you want to hear specific guests, let me know. Call me, reach out, uh, because we're looking for content, especially right now. It's hard to get people uh, um, uh, most of the time. And hey, maybe people in self-isolation can do a recording from their telephone, just like what we're doing right Feel now. Feel good stories. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for listening. We will be here for you this time next week.